Another issue that Diane and I decided was probably important to become more educated on and, and learn what, if anything, we could do in our state was the refugee resettlement program. And it's, it's another example of it takes several different moving parts, messaging is extraordinarily important, and educating the people in our neighborhoods and our churches and those around us, as well as people who could perhaps help us to make policy decisions about it that would, that would give the, the constituents and citizens a say in what was going on. So I think it was in August of last year, long before this became a really hot button topic where we thought, you know, what do we know about it and what can we find out about it? Our goal was to educate lawmakers and the people about how the system itself worked. You know, one of the things that we constantly grappled with was, you know, if you look at the media and you see the images of the people over in the Middle East and surrounding Syria, I mean, those are heart-wrenching images. So how are we going to say we don't, you know, we don't want you to think about taking care of these young children and these women who are being displaced by war-torn countries and help them. So we took a long time deciding what our messaging would be. You know, we took two hours to get one sentence down. And the more we looked into the refugee resettlement program, the more clear it became to us that it's not their refugees. It's the voluntary agencies whose pockets are being lined. It's the centralized decision making of the United Nations telling us who we're going to take and how many of them. And so we, again, started another Facebook page. It's called Secure South Carolina. And we use that so that we can educate citizens on what's happening and what they can do. Initially, we, we, you know, as our understanding of the issue grew, we asked people to call the governor and talk to her about what she could do. And then um, we felt like if we could have a consensus and more momentum behind this issue, we would have more of a chance to really do something about it. So we began to work the connections that we have in the relationships, right? Politics is social relations, involving strategy to gain authority. So we use the relationships that we have gathered with county councils, with GOP, um, leadership across the state and offered to speak on this issue because people didn't understand it and they needed somebody who would inform their the people that they serve without being inflammatory and upsetting and leaving them feeling like they had no say in the matter. We um, are close with some people who would help us write resolutions that we would pass from a county to county and ask that they bring this up and pass these resolutions to stop the funding. And in and of itself, it was not very, um, didn't have a whole lot of toothiness to it, but it continued to educate counties across the state and different people and make them feel like they could have some sort of a say. And if every county in South Carolina passes the same resolution, don't you think the governor's gonna feel like she's gonna have to address it? But if we're all just sitting on our computers complaining about it or sharing other articles, it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Ann Corcoran's uh, WordPress website, but she's got an incredible, what is it called, refugee resettlement watch.wordpress.com, and she is incredibly prolific in her research, and she's one person, if you feel like one person can't make a difference, she's got a YouTube video that's been watched two million times, and it's spread everywhere. She gives a great explanation on what's going on here, but, um, you know, th the point is, we wanted to educate people, gain some momentum on this. And like I said, we started in August, and I think the San Bernardino or the Paris attacks were in October, was it? So it just seemed like, again, we had done some front end work before an issue came really to, to light, and we were ahead of the curve and fortunate enough to have some people understand a little bit more about what's going on. The, I think the difference in the work that we do versus traditional activism is that traditional activists tend to use a lot of tactics which are based in emotion or fear or frustration and you know deeply passionate care and concern. These tactics tend to leave people without a whole lot of um, strategy or a goal. So we start with a goal 
and then we develop strategy, and then we agree on tactics for how to carry that out so that we can actually get some momentum behind the work that we're doing. Um, this is just another example of some of the work that we're doing and the real life work of the Center for Self-Governance training that we have had. Anybody who takes the training can use it any way they want, but this is how we've chosen to use it. So um, Scott's gonna speak a little bit now.